In this tutorial, we're going to review how to select, install, and program Lutron Wireless Occupancy Sensors from the Lutron Vive Wireless Solution. And by the way, those wireless sensors can also be used with Lutron Ratu Select, Lutron Athena, and Lutron Homeworks. So, without any further ado, let's do it! <laughs> Lutron offers a full range of wireless occupancy sensors called Radio Power Saver that can be used in different types of installation. All those sensors are part of the Lutron Vive solution and therefore they can be used to control Lutron Power Pack wireless lighting modules. They are all passive infrared wireless sensors so they are all very easy to install with a battery that can last up to 10 years and they communicate thanks to the Lutron patented wireless communication technology called Clear Connect, which allow them to tell the occupation status of a space back to the Lutron dimming or switching modules. Those sensors also use Lutron XCT technology, which allow for a very fine motion detection, like someone sitting, turning the page of a book. That's so cool. One of the most popular is probably the ceiling mounted occupancy sensor offering a 360 degree detection for an area between 30 to 62 square meter depending on the height of the ceiling. Then we have those three wall mounted sensors with the battery cover that can be used as a mounting bracket. The first one offers a 180 degrees detection. The second one a 90 degrees detection and the third one is to be used for corridor detection. But before we go any further, this video is sponsored by Adelux. Yes, that's right, this is us. Based in the UK, we've got over 16 years of experience with Lutron lighting control all over the world. We are specialized in high-end residential where we design, supply, and program Lutron systems such as Lutron Homeworks, Lutron Ratu Select, and Lutron Blinds and Curtains. We work directly with end users, but also with architects and lighting designers, electrical contractors, and smart home AV specialists. So, if you too want to take your current lighting control project to the next level and be looked after by a reputable Lutron professional, feel free to get in touch with us now. Contact details in the comment section below. Okay, let's go back to our tutorial. What makes those Lutron wireless sensors so great is that all their settings, including the test to make sure the sensor is in the right position, are done directly on the unit itself. With regard to the positioning and the communication, we'll find at the front or on the top of those sensors two buttons. The first one called test is to be used to check the detection area of the occupancy sensor. Once in place, we just need to quickly press on it. The lens will then blink briefly, indicating we enter test mode. We then need to confirm the coverage area by walking through the space, observing the lens, which will glow solid every time motion is detected. To exit test mode, we just have to press on the test button again. And if the button is not pressed, the test mode will automatically time out 15 minutes after being enabled or five minutes after the last detected motion. Cool. Then we have the second button here with the bulb icon to test the wireless communication. That test has to be done once the motion detector has been assigned to a dimming or switching Lutron power pack module, for example. Each press on that button will toggle on and off the Lutron lighting module to which it is assigned to. This will confirm good communication between the occupancy sensor and the lighting control device. For more details on how to assign Neutron Occupancy Sensor to a Neutron Power Pack lighting module, you will find the link of one of my previous videos on the subject in the comment section below. Now, to adjust the sensor settings 
we will use those three buttons at the back. By default, those occupancy sensors are set to toggle on and off the Lutron lighting modules they are assigned to. That's what we call Auto On, Auto Off. To confirm this setting, we just need to press on that button here on the Auto On colon to see that the LED is aligned with Enable. Very good. The light will now turn on automatically when someone enters the room and will switch off automatically when the room's empty or unoccupied. Now, if the room I want to control has a window, for example, so it can benefit from some natural light, I can set my sensor to do nothing when someone enters the room, so it is down to the person to decide to turn the light on if needed, from a wall-mounted Lutron Pico control, for example, and if that person forget to switch off the light when exiting the room, the light will automatically switch itself off. That's what we call manual on, auto off. To activate this mode that we also call vacancy mode, we just need to simply disable the auto on mode. To do so, I'm just going to press and hold on this very same button until the LED starts blinking and then press again until the LED align with the disabled position here. Then I press and hold again until the LED turns off and if I want to confirm this new setting, I just need to quickly press on that same button. There we go. The ceiling mounted sensor, however, has an additional option that we call auto on, low light, auto off, that will force the light to turn on automatically only if the room has a very low level of ambient light, like if our room had now its shutters closed. This mode is similar to the vacancy mode we just discussed, except that if the ambient light is too low when someone enters the room, the light will automatically turn on. That's so cool. <laughs> Then, on each Lutron occupancy sensor, we can set the type of activity we want to be able to detect, the sensitivity of the sensor if you wish. To modify this setting, in the same way, we need to press and hold on this button here, on the activity column, until the LED starts blinking. By default, the Lutron occupancy sensors are set to detect low activity, to be used in an office or meeting room where the occupants will often be seated for a long period of time. We'll note that the LED shift from the button to the top. So if I press once, I will select the high activity setting to be used in a corridor, for example. And if I press again, I'll select medium activity. Here, I'm gonna leave my sensor set to its default setting, which is low activity. And to conclude, we have the timeout setting, which means that once the space is empty or unoccupied, it is the time where the light will stay on until the sensor tells the rest of the Lutron equipment to switch the light off. If I quickly press on the timeout button here, we can see the Lutron sensors are already set to a 15 minutes timeout. So if I need to change this setting in the very same way again, I'll press and hold on that button here until the LED starts blinking. Then if I press on it, I can select the 30 minutes timeout. And when I press again, the five minutes timeout. There's also a very short timeout of one minute that can be very useful for spaces briefly occupied. To access that setting, I just have to press and hold on the timeout button, but for 10 seconds this time up until those three LEDs start blinking all together, as you can see here. First, I'm going to release the button and then press on it again to save that one minute timeout. Once again, if I quickly press on that button, I get the confirmation that my timeout is well set to one minute. <laughs> Very good. Voila, there you have it. How to select install and program Lutron Radio Power Saver occupancy sensors so you can improve energy savings in your lighting control projects. I hope you find this video useful and if you have any questions with regards of Lutron occupancy sensors, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Adelux YouTube channel 
so you can be updated when the next video is released. Thank you very much. Good luck and talk to you again on the next tutorial.